So this topic, quick take here, is inspired by 90 Day Before the 90 Days. We have um, the question is, is sexual compatibility important? And I'm going to use these two couples from the show for example. We have Nicola and Misha and new couple Cleo and Christian. We find out Cleo is autistic right from the start. Uh, then later on, we find out that Cleo is also a transgender woman, while Christian is born a male and also living as a male. We also find out later that Christian has never had a relationship with a transgender woman or a transgender person before. So that may be a new challenge, but they said um, Christian says he's up for it and he really cares about this person. So he's going to find out. Um, if their love is going to work, but he seems like the sexual part is may not be an issue for him at this time because he just feels so connected to this person. But we're going to see what's going to happen with that. Again, the question is sexual compatibility important. Then we have Nicola and Misha. And um, we know that Nicola is a devout Catholic, 46, never had sex, saving himself for marriage, and hopefully that marriage is with Misha. Misha, I believe, is 43. She's had a couple of kids. She's had her share of relationships and sexual relationships. So they're on two different planes when it comes to their sexual knowledge, their um, sexual experience. So these two couples I'm using as an example is sexual compatibility important. I thought it was a lot of fun seeing Nicola and Misha meet for the first time and the little Christian kind of jokes that they made the, the, with using their religion and just having fun with each other um, because it could have gone another way as far as you know them both being devout in their faith that they may have felt we can't really touch each other we can't kiss we can't joke around and have fun with each other, but right off the bat, that's what they started doing. And they were kissing and all of that. And Nicola looked very happy because he hadn't kissed anyone in like 16 years. So I thought their connection was cute in the beginning. We see later on some things are gonna go down uh, that may disconnect them on some level if you look at the previews. But we're gonna keep watching them and their story. And Cleo and Christian haven't even met each other yet, so we're not really sure how their connection will be face-to-face, uh, -face, how they will get along once they meet up. Because many of us know long-distance relationships and meeting people online at times you may get something different than what you expected and the chemistry may not be there as it was when you're talking with this person online. I actually saw somebody ask the question, can you fall in love with somebody that you've never met? And yes, you can. 90 day shows that, online dating shows that um, as long as you have ability to communicate with that person back and forth, I definitely think you could fall in love. But will sexual compatibility come into play? Will it make or break the relationship? Can it make or break the relationship? Um, we'll find out with these couples. And, and you know, you can kind of come up with your own thoughts on that because many people are different. Some people feel that sex is one of the top issues in a relationship. Um, there are some people that have different sexual needs, some that are more sexual and some that are less. If it's two people come together and they're not very sexual people in general, then, you know, some, some of us may have thought that's not a thing. Everyone's sexual. But no, there are people that are like not really that into sex. I believe you may call them asexual. And correct me if I'm wrong. I'm always up for correction, guys. Um, email me at cbiztv at yahoo.com or drop something in the comments. But there are people that are just not that into sex. And then there's people that are... Um, again, like I said, sex is the top thing for them. Now, if you have two people that feel the same way when it comes to sex, then I guess that'll work out. You guys must be sexually compatible, but, um, in these two cases with these two couples, we'll find out because we don't really know, um, Chris has never been in a transgender relationship with a transgender person and Nicola's never had any sexual experience at all. 
so it all depends it depends on the person it depends on the again level of importance you put on sex when it comes to your relationship uh, I do think it's important to be compatible and to me if you guys have the same type of drive or appetite or very similar then that makes you compatible and also if you're willing to work with that person and you can meet them somewhere in the middle that also can make you compatible as well because some people aren't willing to meet you in the middle or they act as they are but they feel that they're still unfulfilled and they keep that quiet and then they end up going outside the relationship like these are things that can happen if you guys aren't sexually compatible and I think it's better to find out sooner than later because I don't I wouldn't want anyone to go out on me in a relationship because that's the reason you know there could be many reasons but you know I think it's something that you should talk about and it shouldn't be the last thing on the table because, you know, as a Christian and a person of faith, again, we don't talk a lot about sex. Look at Nicola and Misha. Um, again, they're devout in their faith. They may have talked about sexual things, but not probably not in depth or in detail. I'm not really sure because I don't know their all of their talk and banter, but many Christians know that basically it's a kind of a taboo topic off of this topic um, maybe until you're in a certain level of relationship like engaged then maybe you guys can start talking about it in depth but I think it, any stage of a relationship is, is important to talk about uh, because it is I think it's it just has an important level to your life everybody was not is not a Christian everybody was not born a Christian and they may have had desires and relationships before they became a Christian and they still have some of those same things. So it's so many things that you should talk about, whatever your faith is or you don't have a faith at all. Uh, I think it's really important to talk about that side of your relationship and don't put it at the end or at the bottom. I think people do that a lot. And I think sometimes guys do that because they may not want the woman to feel uncomfortable or, you know, whoever's the more, the more sexual person in the relationship may put that on the back burner. But I think you definitely need to put that out there because you don't want to be in something that you guys just don't match up in that area and there's nobody willing to compromise. And then that, I think, is when the deal is done, when no one's willing to compromise. People are being secretive and going out on the relationship and so honestly i do believe sexual compatibility is important for the couple it depends is it the top thing on their list it may not be the top on their list but i think it takes a precedence and it should be talked about and it can have a big effect on a relationship but again if it's not of high importance to you it doesn't have to break your relationship and there can be something that's worked out so what are you guys thoughts on sexual compatibility how important is it can you go without that in a relationship can you be on two different compatibility levels when it comes to that area everything else can match up except for this one thing where is that important and can that be a deal breaker what's your thoughts comment below or email me anytime irenecbiztv at yahoo.com we talk about faith love and trends and you can always hit up our podcast listen in anytime at cbiztvmedia.com thanks for listening guys god bless